No question, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I, Walter. I, Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. Okay, hey, it's Walter. It's May 24th, so tomorrow is um, Memorial Day. Yeah, I was, um, I got that clip, by the way, from Biden. I heard it on uh, Ken Matthews. He was actually covering for Rush. Um, you know what? I already forgot, but um, Rush, I mean Rush, Trump had been taking this, um, oh God, hydroxy, uh, you know what? I already forgot the rest of it, but you, you know what I mean. And he's been, now, one friend who was a Trump supporter said, supposedly, like he doesn't believe it. And then so other people like I have a guy I work with, he believes it because he he listens to CNN. He watches CNN and he's like, "Oh, Trump is such an idiot for taking that, um, that hydroxy um, chloric. I think it's chloroquine. Uh, I think it's chloroquine or something like that." So I kind of like believe him because the man is kind of gutsy and ballsy, uh, meaning Trump. So I would not be surprised if he was. Um, but the whole point is, and even Rush has been pointing out, because Rush Limbaugh believes in it, that he's do, he had, you know, had taken it, is because, um, well, the reason he thinks that the, the, the media, you know, CNN and the Democrats are trying to make such bad press for Trump on this one is because if it's for real, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm speaking out of terms, but if it's for real... This would cost like 20 bucks a uh, dosage. I mean, it's like nothing. The pharmaceutical companies aren't going to make anything, and nobody else is going to make anything. That's what Trump had said. So, yeah. By the way, um, you won't hear this, and you know, I'm recording at, um, what time is it right now? It's like 10, a little after 10 o'clock, something like that. But my one friend, Matt, he used to try to call me and, and try to throw me off guard. But you know what? I learned one of the problems with this PC and Audacity, this Alienware PC, is certain devices like my cell phone throw off uh, my recording completely. Like it gives it uh, feedback. So I don't know if that's what happened years ago. I still get a little bit of feedback, but it's much worse if I'm not. If I have that on, it, it sends off like some type of signal that interferes with the PC. So just to give you a heads up, I keep on forgetting to mention that. Um, yeah, I mean, I mentioned this to a friend, Matt, something different. But um, and I kind of stand behind this is with the education system. I really believe over the years um, I saw it with my very own eyes. They really dumb it down. Um, quite a bit, and I, I have my reason behind that, and I I would think information to kind of support that point. And by the way, if you're if you're um, curious where I got that Biden clip, it was um, I found on uh, found it on the freebeacon dot com, and it was titled "Biden: If You Don't Vote for Me, You Ain't Black" is the name of it. He was on some um, uh, radio talk show, I believe, or something like that. I don't know. It's called The Breakfast Club. Um, so in case you you know, are interested, I actually, um, what was it, about a week or two ago at where I work now, uh, apparently somebody called in and said they have uh, the coronavirus. And I hate to say it, but I think sometimes people may just do so and uh, 
so they can get out of working and maybe collect. I don't know. I really don't know the whole situation. But I was really upset. A couple people were. There was a guy I worked with, a younger guy, and he lives at home such as I do, but he's a lot younger, too. He's probably only, like, 19. So that's understandable. But um, he, I guess he told his mother that, hey, I have, um, you know, he has a single mom, I guess, um, either divorced or separated. But he said, oh, yeah, my mom told me I can't come home tonight. She said, yeah, I'm going to have to find somewhere else to go. You're not coming in this house. Because he said, oh, I, I might have uh, somebody at work didn't come in because he has a coronavirus. And I was worried because I have my parents that are 81. Um, and, you know, um, um, my mom has a lot of physical ailments. And I didn't want to give anything to them. I was really upset about this. But unfortunately, and at the same time, fortunately, uh, just uh, past week ago, an aunt passed away, a very close aunt. So that's why it's unfortunate. You know, um, I don't want to say much about it. Um, probably I shouldn't, you know, just for the respect of relatives. But, yeah, she passed away and the funeral was uh, this past Thursday. So. Um, that being said, I was able to get a day off of work for, you know, a loved one passing away, a relative, uh, my, my father's sister. So, um, I had taken advantage of that fact in the way of, I got other things done besides her funeral. And that was to get tested for coronavirus. Cause you know, I'm really afraid. I don't want to expose anybody else to this. I could be very well. I could be it could be a carrier carrier. I don't know. I mean, you can even get the test done and still be positive. But I got the test done at a place called Patients for or Patient First. And they asked for all my information. Um, yeah, it's a physician. It was a, phys, a physician who had checked me out. Her name was Hannah Steinoff. And um you know, I got the test done. Let's see. Date was 52120 a couple days ago. And I never heard back. They said, we'll call you back. And I, I figure it's because it's the holiday weekend. They're not going to call you anyway. So I had taken it upon myself this afternoon. They gave you paperwork in a way you can uh, log in. And my test results came back negative, which is really good. Uh, date was uh, again the twenty first. It said test Corona uh, Corvid nineteen virus SARS CoV two RNA result negative. Normal range not detected. De- normal range not detected. I don't know what that means. Abnormal flag normal. Date pre uh, performed was on the twenty first. So yeah, everything came out fine um so i was happy about that and it kind of put my mind at ease at least i know you can't go by that but i'm just saying it definitely put my mind at ease um and uh, in fact my one brother had texted me just uh, a little while ago and he said oh did you find out the results yet so i just send him the results of a screen of a pdf file i had um again yeah, I definitely put my mind at ease. Um, so anyway, going to, uh, you know, I'm not say um, going to this thing with the education thing. Uh, I saw this story the other day, and you know what? Don't take me wrong, or don't, you know, don't, don't misunderstand me. But there is a story I found, a really cute kid. She's 14 years old, and she had graduated from high school and um it, a, a cute little indian girl and she has a, had been accepted in i think 35 different universities around the country you know they wanted her in fact she has a brother who graduated high school i believe at age 12 and he actually graduated from college before the age of of, you know, 14 or 15, something like that. Anyway, um, the story I saw this other day was in uh, Sacramento, it says. A 14-year-old Sacramento girl has been accepted to... Okay, 
I thought it was 35. Eight California colleges, and now she's just start, uh, trying to decide which one she wants to attend. Um. Yeah, she, okay. Um, oh, she's 14. Did I say 14? I might have said 12. So if I did say 12, I apologize. I guess I should have read a little bit more on because I forgot all the, the facts. So anyway, she graduated from high school at the age of 13. Um, and let's see. It says something about her brother, too, later on. I guess it might have been there was a video, and I'm not watching. I'm just, like, reading her her thing. But I know her brother wasn't that much older, and he graduated not too much. Uh, she He actually graduated and accelerated through high school and college before her. Um, yeah, it says she doesn't uh, have a driver's license because she's way too young, but yet she graduated from from college, uh, high school. Excuse me again. She graduated from high school and is going to be attending college very soon. And she's only 14 years old. So I told, I guess, actually I told two friends. I said, I'm not saying this girl is not gifted, and I'm not saying she's, you know, obviously she's very smart, but I I am saying that um, they have dumbed down the education system so much just to make sure everybody would pass and that it wouldn't be discriminatory against anyone that, I mean, anyone... And I do mean anyone can attend college and actually do rather well. I'm speaking from, you know, from myself, for myself. Because actually in this list of stories I had, uh, I was just going to kind of, you know, go down the list of stories. I actually was curious because my IQ over the years from in you know, grade school, high school, and you name it, um, my Education, I mean, my IQ level was like 97. So I looked, no, 70, 76. So I looked it up. And, you know, even even on stories, because there's so many people out there whose IQ is really low. And I'm not going to try to say anything that's going to get me in trouble. But whose IQ is so low that they now made that almost like, well, it's not really good, but it is borderline. Like they can't say anything that would be discriminatory. So let me see if I can find it again. So I believe, yeah, my IQ was 76 IQ. Okay. Uh, Borderline impaired. Like before, uh, I mean, I hate to tell you, and I'm not trying to insult myself, but uh, 76 IQ, it looks like it was taken off my Facebook page because I had posted it there so I could, like, read it later on. It's not there that I can find it. But um, a 76 IQ um, is pretty bad because 70 is retarded. So anyway, this is under that bing because I have, excuse me, I have a PC now. So I'm hoping everything is working correctly on this damn PC. 76 is not a great IQ, according to bing. A 76 IQ means borderline impaired. Now, it doesn't quite mention what it means by borderline impaired to put it into uh, perspective an iq range between from 80 to 120 is normal or you know obviously above normal with 120 an iq of 76 is very low but there are people with lower scores well the thing it fails to mention that lower scores means borderline retardation and some of my Test scores on the test I had gotten done to determine if I had a learning disability were definitely below 76. They were on the cusp or right there as being retarded. Does that mean I'm like um, completely dysfunctional? No, but it does definitely mean I have a difficult time with comprehending many things. And this is the argument I had with my old job. Um, my new job, believe it or not, has been more um, than cooperative with my understand or their understanding that I have an issue comprehending uh, certain types of tasks. In fact, uh, this new job, they do not give me any of the tasks 
that my old job would force upon me uh, after repeatedly telling them and repeatedly going to different doctors and getting repeated to our test repeatedly done that said, hey, listen, he's incapable and it's not even a psychological, it's not at all a psychological thing. It is definitely a physiological impairment. I have physical brain damage. Um, so how do you do a podcast? Well, I had a, for one thing, uh, when I was 13, um, part of the brain damage damage came about when I was paralyzed from the waist down when I had a virus uh, land on my spinal cord. And it had caused a paralysis from the waist down. In fact, they pricked me when I was 13 years old with a, pin, a needle and I could not feel anything, nothing from the waist down. And I don't know about that burning question probably other people have. Did you feel something uh, where, well, they didn't really care about that, trust me. I just know I had no sensation. So it got to the point that the virus had taken its course. They had no explanation for where it came from or why it happened and why I was paralyzed. But they did do um, CAT scans, brain scans, the whole nine yards. They figured out, yeah, there was some brain damage. So um, people don't use um, all their, you know, some people don't use any gray matter, but some people, I mean, most general, um, and generally speaking, you only use what is a, um, a very small percentage of your brain. So I had to reteach myself how to walk again. So I, I actually did. I'm not making that up. I'm not trying to make a... A big deal out of it. I'm just saying it's the truth. Um, and I was, when I was in grade school, um, I was in a class with, you know, people with physical disabilities. And I remember there was one guy in my class when I was in grade school. It kind of freaked out everybody else, but he definitely did look retarded. Um, that he had some type of retardation. He was um, he was very slow, and he wore a diaper. And I'm not joking. The guy wore a diaper, and he did not speak. He kind of just moaned things, and he was like a big infant. But for some reason, they let him in the class because it was only like grade school, and they assured everybody, "Well, he's not. There's nothing wrong with it." It was like, well, everybody was kind of scared. He always had mucus hanging out of his nose, and he was like a big infant that they allowed into this class with me. But there there was other people with other ailments. Um, and I didn't get in that class because um, I was the top 10 of the class. I got in there because every single one of us had some type of physical disability of some sort. And mine wasn't because I was paralyzed. This was even before that. I mean, I'm talking, I'm speaking before I was the, um, of the age of 13. I mean, it was much younger than that, maybe 12 or so. So I was, uh, my mother actually made me go to a, uh, like a preschool thing before school. I forget what you call that. And I had issues with that too. But um, it wasn't, and I'm not joking about this, it wasn't until middle school where I actually could finally, um, with a lot of work, I could actually tell time. I couldn't read the hands on the clock. I didn't know how to. Um, there was a, a lot of difficulties I had. Now, the one guy, like I said, um, I have a picture of it. Like if Matt ever hears this and he says, oh, can you prove this? I can show you because there was one girl. She looked pale as a ghost. She had um, some type of more than just diabetes because she died. Um, rather young, I understand. And I can't remember any of these people's name names, but there was, you know, people, there was a guy in the class, he had a hearing aid. There was the guy who wore a diaper and they would have to take him in the back. And I'm not joking. This is in grade school. Change the teachers how to change his diaper. And I still remember that because for some reason, something that um, dramatic kind of just really sticks with you so i i can't even make up uh, stuff like this this is for real 
This is the complete truth. I'm not trying to exaggerate anything. So um, throughout my high school years, they did try to put me out in normal classes and not very successfully. So over the years when I was in high school, and there was a lot of time I was not in high school because I was in uh, sanitariums, whatever you want to call them, mental state hospitals. So I list, I missed out on a lot of, lot of high school. In fact, my because um, of depression, suicide, OCD, and severe, severe harassment from certain kids at school um, caused me to have many mental breakdowns in addition to having physical problems. I had emotional problems from people at school, so I had the whole thing. So that's another thing. I missed out, and I, I think I graduated with – Maybe like a seventh or tenth grade I, uh, education level, and my mother fought for that for me to graduate because they they said you that me that I had missed out on three years of my education, and yet I graduated um, like in an uh, eighty six, I believe. And the only reason for that was they they told me they told my mother that he's going to have to me I would have to go to school for another three years from all the education I missed out on and it would have really made no difference because um, like I said when I was in high school um, they try to put me out in normal classes they uh, you know regular classes with regular students and every time even the simplest class they put me in I could not handle it I could not grasp I couldn't keep up um, with the rest of the students so they end up putting me in special education for everything I think the only thing I ever survived when I was in school that I actually was able to pass um, was a geology class and that was very simple but everything from when I got into the uh, school until I left, I was in special ed classes for everything. So, you know, there's something to be said. Somehow, when I, you know, because I was really determined to, and you can, you know, you can get help from these Act 101 programs and stuff, and I was very determined, and I, I had taken only, I think, two, possibly three classes a semester I was very determined to go, you know, attend college. That was like my goal, to do something that I could start and finish. Unfortunately, most people, it would take four years. For me, it had taken about, I would say, almost 10 years. Because to get my associate's degree, it had taken seven. And then for my bachelor's degree, it had taken me another four. So you say seven and four, that's actually more. What is that? Uh... Yeah, I'm going to use my fingers right now. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years. 11 years to get a four-year degree. So because my learning, my way of learning is not like everybody else. I, I, I did it. but And I think, though, the thing that really helped is the fact as, as I progressed, taking so many years to go, for school, um, to go to school, I noticed that the education – got simpler and simpler because you had people I always make this joke there was a guy when I was going to uh, Cabrini College in Radnor there was a guy there who was really dumb I mean I'm not just even saying it. he was really dumb the professor even picked on him about it and he pointed out this one get uh, kid in one of the classes and he told the kid you can't hand in an essay uh, by triple spacing and using like 14 inch fonts, or maybe it was even 17 inch fonts. He said, I will not accept a paper like that. Triple spaced with like 14 or 17 inch fonts. I'm not even joking. It was something like that. And he, he made sure that he made an ass out of that kid for rightfully so. Um, so, you know. There is something to be said about, you know, how – and you know what? I think that kid did graduate. Somehow he did graduate. That was one class. It was one of my my English classes. So um, right now 
I haven't proved any, I have not proved anything. So here we go. Here here's where it really kicks in. And God love this girl, but there's a girl who has Down syndrome, who had just uh, graduated from college. It was on it was on uh, line. This is Glassboro, New Jersey. Eyewitness News has been honoring the class of 2020 throughout May. And this was one of the colleges I actually looked into in Jersey because they supposedly had a really good uh, communications department. Well, apparently they do because it's the same school. It's Rowan University is celebrating its first graduate graduate who has Down syndrome. Well, maybe the, the, the grade point average wasn't that good on this girl. Well, they actually give her grade point average. So, you know what? I should just bite my tongue at this point. And I, you know what? I I have a lot of respect, but you got to remember a human being who has Down syndrome is definitely has some form of mild re, or like not mild, like definitely has some type of retardation. So that being said, how come this graduate, which I'm not taking it away from her, she probably worked really hard. Um, she graduated, it says, with a Bachelor of Arts in Radio, Television, and Film, and a minor, she had taken a minor in Journalism. And guess what her GPA, P, GPA is? It says right here, it is a 3.426. That is really good. That's like a, um, that's like an A- minus or a B+. Plus. Across the board. Now, I have a bachelor's degree in radio and television. She has one. Um, it's called. It used to be called at Temple ATF uh, or RTF, you know, radio, television, and film. So she got her degree um, major in radio, television, and film and her minor in journalism. And she is – she has um, – she has Down syndrome, and she's got almost a 3.5. Now, it's not the same. I'll repeat what she exactly had, a 3.426. So where don't you see that, you know, the kid who's 14 years old and is, is going to be attending college and the girl with Down syndrome, um, you don't see the, the, the pattern here? That they have to make things so simple that anyone can pass. Now, for the gifted child, that's no challenge for her. It was no challenge for her brother who was gifted um, because they have to down, dumb down the system. We used to call that the bell curve. I don't know if they still use that term, where the person with the lowest score has to get a passing grade. So with the bell curve, you lower the the, um, the be- you lower the standards that the person who would normally fail will at least at least pass. But then that brings well, that's why it's called a bell curve. It brings everybody else way above. It not only brings that person who would have failed above, it brings everybody and accelerates with their normal um I you know their normal. Uh, grade point average would be by not just a little bit, but by a lot, obviously. So you got the the gifted child who had graduated uh, high school at 14, and you got the girl with Down syndrome from New Jersey who graduated from college with a 3.426. I mean, what what am I missing or what are other people not seeing that I can cl- I can see as clear as day. So I just want to say I rest my case on that one. Um, I've been hearing this like uh, I forget I listened to so many different talk show hosts. So I had to pull one up. Um, I had different stories, and I'll probably repeat myself because I have one more. Yeah, I had like one more already, pop up, you know, put up, and then the rest I'm just going to read. But I, I continue to hear about ballots um, that were, one, ballots that were chucked, thrown out, um, that were Republican votes. They were thrown out like 2014, 16, and 18, I believe, were the years. 
that people were throwing, uh, you know, the people who uh, tally the ballots, whatever you want to say, they were found in garbage cans or elsewhere and not um, not counted up. And you wonder why Democrats win by large scale amounts. And it's not because they are popular. Oh, that's another thing. And I think that actually that happened in Philadelphia. Now, that story, I don't know if I'm going to find it tonight within the next 30 minutes. But if I do, I will mention it. But um, and I've mentioned this, too. I've I've been under suspicion for a very long time that I believe. That in Philadelphia, Narstown, that we have unregistered voters or illegal immigrants, undocumented workers, whatever you want to call them, that definitely must vote in our elections. And I believe that. I strongly believe that because that's another issue. Um, I remember, I think it was Rush. He was on for one day last week, maybe two days. And he mentioned it. He said that um, in California, because I pulled up something I'm looking at right now where uh, Ingram, uh, how do you say her name? Laura Ingram from Fox. She had something on uh, about this where um, a segment on her show. I apologize for messing up her name. But she basically mentioned and she pointed it out to uh, officials from California. You know, you're having illegal immigrants who are not legal citizens because obviously they're illegal. And it's actually titled the video I, I, I actually bookmarked now. New California policy, policy illegal immigrants voting. Now, that is with a question mark, but it is happening. It is happening. You have many people that are voting who are, are not legal citizens of this country. They're illegal citizens. And um, I remember a couple years ago, because that's going to be coming up soon for me, where I, I went for my driver's license, and there was a guy next to me who did not speak any English. And he was going for a driver's license. So that being said, how do you think these people are uh, be, uh, being able to vote? Well, they can use their driver's license. This is why, you know, especially Republicans are trying to put this to a stop where be more, you know, than just your photo ID to go into a ticket booth and vote because uh, Democrats are saying, oh, we just want to give driver's license to illegals so they can uh, so they are able to drive back and forth from their job, which they shouldn't have in the first place if they're illegal. And they said it's going to stop there, which is, you know, the, de- the Republicans are saying that's not true. You're going to go a lot further with that. And guess what? The Republicans are absolutely correct on that. The Democrats lied about that um, because. They are allowing, with just a driver's license, a photo ID, they're allowing illegal immigrants to vote in California, I believe Pennsylvania. Philadelphia just got busted for throwing out, uh, which is different, I understand, throwing out ballots of Republican votes. How do you know it's it just stops there? How do you know it doesn't go further? How do you know they don't allow illegal immigrants to vote? Because I really think they do. Um, okay, so here is I, I'm going to use I'm using this picture because um, I was trying to look for that story. Uh, it was a story from Newsweek, and Newsweek you really cannot trust either. But it says immigrants are getting the right to vote in cities across America, and they're talking illegal immigrants. Now this is on Newsweek. Now, that's really scary because Newsweek, you can't trust it. That is a really, that used to be a good magazine probably a few years ago, long time ago. But you can't trust them. And they're even openly admitting that, hey, across the country, illegals are voting. So there was one from thehill.com. I'm not going to try to read it because I know I'll just destroy it. But there is a story on that same topic on the hill.com. Now the hill you can trust. The truth about illegal voting. There's a story on that. So again, 
I'm just pointing out where you can go, what direction, if you are interested. And if you can't find it, I always keep my, um, you know, my door open to people um, in the in the sense of, okay, if you want to know about this, and I mentioned it, but I don't give you enough information, you can just give me a holler, give me a shout out, and I will give you the link. Because I, the stories I read are stories that um, I have some source of information in front of me normally. So I'm just letting you know. Um, You know, it was kind of weird, a little side note, because when I had more money and I was able to uh, go on vacations an awful lot, which I can't any longer, plus everything's closed down. But when that changes and we can start going out, going on trips, going to concerts and everything like that, It's going to be really depressing for me because I can't really do it the same way I used to. So here I see the story. One of the places, no matter where I go, if it's down the south or up the coast to, well, for me, it's only to Jersey or New York. I always like staying at um, the Holiday Inn Expresses. They They are one of the best places to stay. So I see this story from Bucks County, PA on CBS. Uh, One injured in a shooting at a Holiday Inn Express in Falls Township. So it was a pretty brutal shooting. So at a Holiday Inn Express, because those are actually pretty nice. But now that, like, it just seems like everything I can't do, um, at least there's a little bit like, well, at least I'm, I'm, you know, that old saying about misery loves company. Well, I'm enjoying it because I can't enjoy anything at this point. I don't have the money to do so. So anyway, I'm trying to bleed through because I might actually have only a half an hour show. Oh, one thing I'm looking at, um, I, it says, um, packed pool party in Missouri's Missouri Lake, um, shows no one social distance. And I hear this all over the place. I see this all over the place um, on segments that I see online where uh, people are not social distancing. But you know what? You don't hear. Maybe it's too soon. The cro- Like, because last weekend this happened down Jersey that the, the beaches, people are on top of each other. And um, usually it might take maybe, it does take a couple days, but that was a whole week now. And you don't hear about any large-scale uprise in coronavirus cases. In fact, you heard the opposite. And it actually, they're going to say, well, you know what, it's been a lot hotter out. Really? It's actually, the temperatures haven't, you know, went be above 70 and when they say it's 70 degrees, it feels kind of cool still. It doesn't feel that hot because we had a very cold winter somewhat. And, um, you know, the thing is, um, you know, um, it's, it, it's not warm enough for this, you know, say, oh, when the temperatures get warmer, the coronavirus is going die to out, die out. But it hasn't gotten that warm yet. So that's what I don't understand. The temperatures haven't, you know, it didn't rise enough to kill off this coronavirus. But yet, um, you know, it is around the holidays. People are not working. They're tired of being pegged in the house and on top of each other. And yet there hasn't been any large scale rise in the amount of people uh, getting this coronavirus. So what is that telling you? You know what I mean? Hey, one thing, I don't know if you guys, there was some girl, she's a wrestler um, named, is it Terrace House? Star Tara, whatever, she died at 22. After cyberbullying, that's kind of weird. I I posted that story, some cute chick, she um, died at age 22. They said from cyberbullying, so I wonder if she committed suicide. Um... And by the way, if this coronavirus, um, it's been stated on on the radio that if the coronavirus goes up again, um, Trump is not going to, he's going to not suggest a lockdown like he did before on like closing businesses and stuff. And you know what? 
I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I stole this story off somebody, but um, I think it was a guy, John, at my other job, my old job. It was from the New York uh, Post. $21 million Brooklyn Field Hospital never saw a patient amic uh, coronavirus pandemic. So, you know, they built this big facility in New York expecting this large-scale breakout of everybody getting the coronavirus. And guess what? They never used uh, this emergency facility whatsoever. So, again, what is that telling you? I should probably just name the show that. Um, I I just, personally, I just don't understand. A lot of nonsense going on. A lot of nonsense. Sorry, I just opened up my iTunes and probably a dumb mistake. I hope I didn't mess up my uh, my podcast uh, recording thing. And the reason I did that, because there was this movie, it it was okay. But it was definitely worth kind of checking out. Some film that was like British and American. And I think Mancini did the orchestrated music. Now, I think Mancini did the music for Friday the 13th as well, unless I'm mistaken him for somebody else. But the movie was called Life Force. And it reminded me like it stole a little bit off of Alien, the movie Alien, the original one. Um, Had a really hot-looking woman in there, completely nude. She was the main vampire, but it's space vampires that make their way to Earth. So, believe it or not, part of it, if you're a a Doctor Who fan like me, you can see that they took a, had taken a little bit of the idea from Tom Baker's uh, State of Decay episode when he was Doctor Who. It was kind of very obvious, too. Um, but, they, yeah, they stole from that. Um, Alien, um, 28 Days Later, which I forget when that movie came out, because it's like a 90s movie, but 28 Days Later was a little bit in there. And actually, um, Return of the Living Dead. So if you like those B horror shows, it, well, Doctor Who is not B to me. It's not a B uh, meaning like a bad horror movie thing. But if you like that kind of stuff, because it's very British too, very prim and proper, very British. Um, but if you like Doctor Who and really uh, kind of cool looking B horror movies and Alien is not a B horror movie either, so I, I shouldn't even put that in that category. Um, you would probably like uh, Life Force. Um, the hot girl alien vampire was definitely a plus, but you know what? It was just she was completely nude all the time, so three quarters of the movie. So it just after a while, it just you got jaded from it very quickly. Um, I was telling people there's another movie you have to check out if you like B-horror movies. It's a classic. It's really boring. It's really bad. I should look that up. In fact, I might right now. It's called uh, Monster Robot because I forget what year it came out. It is god-awful bad with a guy in a gorilla suit that he brought on to the um, film and that he owned himself because he was a stunt guy. And the director, all he added to it, besides shooting outdoor shots, it's an old film, is, uh, oh, no, it's called Robot Monster. Well, I made a a big mistake. I called it Monster Robot when it's actually Robot Monster. I should not do that. I'll I'll get reprimanded for that one. Well, Walter, you always get everything wrong. Well, I do, I know. Um... But, yeah, I mean, it's funny. Uh, They gave the guy a plastic, made out of plastic, you know, a toy, basically. Helmet, um, not a helmet, but a a thing that, you know, a scuba diver, uh, scuba, scuba, scuba diving helmet that was made out of plastic. You couldn't tell because it was a black and white movie. And the director, all he did with it, the only thing he added to it um, was two antennas for you know tv antennas so it's called robot monster i found it right away and believe it or not imdb only gave it three out of ten um uh, three out of ten 
and Rotten Tomatoes gave it a rotten 36. I can't understand a movie that that's got a guy in a gorilla suit with a scuba head um die or what do you call it um scuba helmet on his head with TV antennas. Why would that be not a great movie? I just can't understand why. But um, it came out in 1953. It says Robot Robot Monster, a.k.a. Monster from Mars, is a 1953 independently made American black and white 3D science fiction film remembered in later decades as one of the worst movies ever made. I just can't understand why. It was produced and directed by Phil Tucker. Oh, boy. I think Tucker made the film I watched tonight. Written by Wyatt uh, Organ, or I don't know. The star, it stars George Nader, Claudia Barrett, and George Barrows. The production company was Three Dimension Dimension Pictures, Incorporated. Uh, The film was distributed by Astor Pictures. Now, originally, apparently, when the movie came out, it's bad enough that it's, it's just a god-awful movie. And it's really funny with the, the prop. But what makes it worse, it was it was shot in 3D. Oh, you know what? I actually see, I'm glad this came up because I wanted to talk about this. And I, I did not put it on my list of things. If you want to see an interesting film. Now, this is really weird. Um, and it was based upon one of Edgar Allan Poe's stories called The Black Cat. And it was a movie initially called Sex Maniac. And it was just shortened to just Maniac. But guess when it came out? 1934. Now, Rotten Tomatoes, I'm looking at it right now, they actually gave that an 89% fresh rating. Now, I did see part of this because I have these streaming services for old classic horror films. And I believe that was on there. But that is... Actually, one of, I would think, this movie called Sex Maniac is one of the first exploitation films because it is actually um, under as a exploitation film. Now, this is in 1934, folks. So that makes it rather, rather really interesting. I'm trying to check my time. So, yeah, Maniac, also known as Sex Maniac, is a 1934 black and white exploitation dash or slash horror film uh, directed by Dwayne um, Epser and written by, well, forget that. I'm not going to even go any further with that because I'll, I'll really screw it up. Now, you can find this film. I didn't go out and try to buy that film. Um, you can find it. All, I'm looking right now. It's on YouTube, TV Troops, and TMC. It is definitely considered a cult classic film, just to let you know. But it's called uh, Sex Maniac, and it does kind of imply um, in the film itself, because I kind of glanced through it really quick, um, Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Hat. So basically, this movie called Sex Maniac is based upon, or it was you know, influenced by Edgar Allan Poe's Black Hat, The Black Hat. So there we go. I got look, gave you a little little extra that I didn't expect. Um, something on a little side note. Now here's another thing because I I said this the other day. Um, that like the I I went down to uh, grab something down in Narstown. Everything is closed, but yet there's tons of cars out, tons of people walking and jogging with no face mask on. But you know what? There was one place open in Narfstown out of everything else being closed besides certain restaurants take out only. It's a, a um, alcohol, uh, what do you call it? A liquor store. And it's in a really shady part of Narfstown. So apparently out of everything that could possibly open, um, which places that are not open, the, the only place that was really open around here is a um in Narstown was a liquor store. That seemed to be so important. So I, I just don't understand that. And the reason I'm saying that is I'm looking at one of my stories. And it says Alabama uh, Alabama strip clubs officially reopen, though some got a head start. Um so apparently strip joints and uh liquor stores and bars 
are the most important thing to open up in the United States other than anything else. So I, I, I just don't understand that. Speaking of which, um, I think I looked up the story after the fact. Uh, Zori hairstyles exposed. Oh, no, 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 that's not the one. Here is, well, I'll read it anyway. It says, Missouri hairstyles exposed more than 90 people to the coronavirus. Uh, I thought it was the hairdresser story. This is about a hairdresser slash barbershop or whatever. A hairstyle stylist in Missouri exposed 91 people to the coronavirus. It said 90, now it's saying 91. Um, that's kind of rare because there's other places. They followed all the rules and regulations. And uh, they got shot down. So, um, the, in fact, one woman got arrested for opening up her hair salon and following, you know, all the rules of how to reopen. So, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's getting close to the end. I'm going to end this in five minutes so I can play the piece from Matt called E Groove, capital E. I don't know all the lingo of music, but Matt explained it to me, and it goes in one ear and out to other because I don't know about music. So it's called E Groove, the letter E. Uh, South Carolina election ballots were reportedly, reportedly found in Maryland this week. Uh, that was on Fox News. Again, I do mention this. This might just play in a second, even though I... I make sure to turn the volume down. It keeps on turning itself up. Um, Yeah. This week, uh, mail-in for... See, this is the thing. These were mail-in ballots. They ended up elsewhere. So that's another thing that's really scary. And you know what? Um, I know two friends said if they... if You know, one said he's just going to mail in his ballot this time, but when it comes to Trump, he's going to go actually to the... Doesn't care how far it is. He's going to go to wherever um, you vote in person is. Well, you should vote both times that way. Um, the other friend is going to do it that way both times. Because you got your primary and then you got your presidential election. Um, since I am down to about three minutes, I'm just going to try to, try to see what I can. Oh, wait, there's a story. I saw something, uh, somebody making a joke about drag race and. Now, I mentioned this, too. Um, this was down in Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt Bo- Boulevard. Uh, they caught, I think, 500 people clocking them at 125 miles an hour. And I, I told the friend that this just doesn't happen just in um, Philadelphia. This is in Philly. I said this help happens elsewhere, too. I think it happens everywhere. But, yeah, it was uh, – my dad told me about the story. That's what I knew about. So I could probably end up with this story, and there's another one uh, in reference to this one. Clocking violations as high as 125 miles an hour, PPA hopes camera curb Roosevelt Boulevard speeding. I probably didn't read that correctly, but you kind of get the gist, I think. And a lot of this speeder stuff – and I see it in our development. I see people – Walking with their kids, jogging in the middle of our development on the street, and it's the same streets that I see um, these trucks with heavily blacked out tinted windows drag race for our development morning, noon, and night. So one of those um, families are going to get completely demolished or killed, and hopefully it will stop these speeders. I don't want to see that happen, but I can I can sense it is going to happen someday. You're going to hear um, a bang and a bunch of people that are basically a roadkill. And n- there's no one to stop this stuff around here or in Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, it says test of, um, test of the system showing that speeding always was a problem on this road um, in, you know, Philly's deadliest area of Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt Boulevard. But uh, it's racking up 21 uh, fatal crashes in 2018 alone has become an eco- you know, ac- academic. During the four days, there were 500 violators doing as much as 125 miles an hour. I mean, that's just really, really. And I've, I see it 
outside my doorstep, and I'm not from Philly. I'm, I'm living on the outskirts of Narstown, so it's really bad. So the other one was um, that I found on my own. Speeders take uh, over empty roads with fatal consequences. This is completely different. This is not Philadelphia. And uh, it's one of these stories. It just really doesn't have anything. But it is from another location. And it was just from uh, last month. Um, and they say it's, it's it was on an uprise with, um, what do you call it, um, with the coronavirus because people are not working. Um, yeah, reckless driving and stuff. It was some story. It was, um, I don't know where I got it from. So I'm trying to actually, it says Poconos or Pocono record. So it has to be around for my one friend lives around that area. Um, anyway, um, since I did run it, I'm pretty much out of the time that I wanted to use, um, one, I, oh, yeah, there's another one. Coronavirus pandemic emptied America's roadways. Now speeders have taken over. This is another story. Um, and this one is not from either the areas I just mentioned. This is from a completely crossed the state lines from east to west coast story. The coronavirus. And this one says um, WashingtonPost.com. And this was back in March, May 11th of this year. So everywhere. And I think my one friend admitted to it, but I said, yeah, it has gotten worse, especially after the coronavirus. Anyway, my friend Matt, I want to wish him luck when he does so. Because um, I ran out of time. There was so much more I wanted to read, but I'm, I'm not going to have time now. That he's going to go to a protest that they're going to try to um, impeach Governor Wolf. When I wish him luck with that, and I've heard on the radio they're also trying to do the same thing with Rachel Levine, who that whole thing is a joke. He really, I'm, I'm not going to call Rachel Levine a woman because no matter how you look at it, it comes up that it's a guy in a dress. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody, but it's the truth. So both of those people in Pennsylvania really need to go. This is Walter from my Walter. I'm going to sign off for now, and I'm going to play Matt's uh, little segment. So have a good one, and have a happy Memorial Day. Just remember what it stands for.